Welcome, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I built this 100 watt high CRI LED for under $200. Now this video is relatively long and it goes into a lot of detail. So to get a high level understanding of what we'll be making, be sure to check out my intro video, which I've added in a link below. I've also included a links to a parts list and everything that I've used along the way. So a couple things to be aware of. Now, while this is a relatively simple build in that I didn't use any solder, this build should definitely not be attempted without a multimeter as you need a multimeter to ensure that your components are electrically insulated from their housing. Now, multimeters can be purchased from sites like amazon.com for less than ten dollars so there's no excuse not to use one for this build finally a word of caution do not attempt this project without first understanding the risks associated with working with electricity i don't have any idea what i'm doing in fact prior to researching this project i didn't even know the difference between a volt and an amp so if you decide to build this you're doing so at your own risk don't take my word for it, any of this so with that out of the way please enjoy the build okay so here are all of the parts that's needed in order to put together this build now, I'm just going to run through each of them really quickly to give you an overview of everything that goes into this, but I'll be talking about each part in more detail as we actually do the assembly. And then, of course, I've linked to all of these parts down in the description below so you can purchase them for your own build. So starting on my left, we have our LED array. And as I mentioned, it's a Bridgelux LED array. This one's a 5600 color temperature, so it's about daylight. It has a forward voltage of uh, about 36 volts and it has a max current of 4.2 amps. So it's about 155 watt LED, so it's gonna be really bright. The other nice thing about this LED is it has a really high color rendering index, about 90 on the color rendering index scale. Um, so that means that the quality of the light that's coming out of this is gonna be very good. Also, um, it's only about $30. I picked this one up from digikey.com. So that's pretty reasonably priced considering how good the light quality is and how high output it is. And then as I mentioned in the intro, this is gonna be a no solder build. So the nice thing about these bridge lux is they have this little mounting point here where you can attach a harness and you can pick up this harness as well from DigiKey for about, I don't know, $1.50 or something like that. So that just clips in and then saves you the trouble of having to solder it. And then on the other end, this connects to your power source. Speaking of power sources, um, we will be using, we'll be powering the light with this old HP laptop adapter that I picked up off eBay. Um, it's 135 watts, so we're not going to be maxing out our LED. And then also worth noting that it is a 19 volt output. Now, in order to get the 36 volts that drives this LED chip, we're going to need to use what's known as a boost converter. And that will take the 19 volts out of this um, laptop power charger in here and convert it into 36 volts coming out there. We're also gonna need this step down converter and that's because we wanna drive the fan that comes with our cooler. And so again, the 19 volts that comes out of the laptop charger is gonna go on the inside and then coming out maybe a volt or two. So that way we can control and keep this fan spinning really slowly. So that way it doesn't generate any noise, especially since I wanna be using this light for video. You're gonna need just a, not a lot of wire, maybe like two, you know, two lengths about like this. You want it to be relatively thick. I think this is like 18 gauge because we're dealing with some high voltages here. You don't want super thin wire since that can get kind of hot. Um, I also have this fan connector and that's because we're gonna take this, connect it to our step down converter. And then on the other end, we'll end up hooking it up to our fan that's on our cooler like that. So you'll end up with a nice, uh, a nice kind of clean connection. Um, we're going to be putting all of these electronics inside this aluminum box. Um, this comes from, uh, let's see, what is this? Bud Industries. It's their CU-234 model. It comes with like, some screws that you can use to screw this backplate on. We're going to be putting all of these components inside of here. Now, in order to mount these components to the aluminum box, we're gonna be using these PCB standoffs. You'll need eight PCB standoffs. And these particular ones are, um, these are eight millimeter in length. And on the inside, they are M3 screw size. So then of course you'll also need some M3 screws. You'll probably need about 16 of those. Um, and these particular ones I got are quarter inch length. So M3 screws, quarter inch in length. Those will screw into these PCB standoffs like so. Then you're also gonna want some of these red insulating washers. Um, and this is just so that way, when you're screwing these guys down onto your PCB boards over here, you don't end up shorting out a component. Um, so that just provides some insulation. So pick up some of those as well. 
Okay, let me get this out of the way. All right, now here's sort of the main piece of our build, and it's the reason why I call it the H5 Frankenlight. And that's because this is the H5 CPU cooler by a company called CryoRig. And it comes with this nice 140 millimeter fan. And we're going to be mounting the LED chip to the front of this cooler. And that'll keep those, you know, 120 watts or whatever that we're gonna be pumping through this thing. It'll keep it from overheating. So you definitely, definitely want a big cooler like this. Um, if you were to just power this up without it being connected to a cooler, it would start smoking in like 10 seconds. Okay, this CPU cooler comes with a lot of different accessories, but the two accessories that we're actually gonna be using with this build, we're gonna be using this mounting plate, and this is gonna be in order to connect the softbox to the front of the cooler. So that'll basically end up getting screwed on like that. And then we'll also make use of this cool um, Phillips head screwdriver that they send us because that's because in order to turn those screws, you put it down through the middle of the cooler like that, and then you can turn those screws in front. Okay, to actually mount this LED to the cooler, we're gonna use what's known as this thermal adhesive. It's kind of like, if you're familiar with two-part epoxies, it's kind of like that, except it also has the thermal transferring properties that thermal paste has. So that way you get a really good thermal bond between uh, the CPU cooler and the LED chip. If you've ever built your own computer, you're probably used to using thermal paste. Well, this stuff, once you put it on and it, and it uh, cures, then it never comes off. So, which is good for our purposes because we don't want this to ever slip off once we've decided to mount it to this cooler. Okay, so to actually mount this device to a tripod, we've got this bit of hardware. And this, all this you can pick up from your local hardware store. This is a six inch, standard angle bracket, um, six inches on each side. We also have this six inch tie. Basically these will come together like that and then end up going into the back of the cooler like so. Um, you're probably gonna need three of these quarter 20 by, let's see what size are these, machine screws. These are quarter 20 by three quarters of an inch. And then I also have um, three just regular quarter 20 nuts as well. So pick those up from your local hardware store. You, to kind of get everything spaced nicely, you probably want to pick up a couple of these nylon spacers. Um, these are half inch outer diameter. Let's see, here's the exact specs. Half inch outer diameter, quarter inch, a little over quarter inch interior diameter. So that'll work good with our quarter 20 bolts. And then they are a quarter inch thick. And that's just to kind of give some spacing and you'll see as we get into the build why you'll need those. To actually mount, this bracket to a tripod. We have this, it's called a ceiling flange. You'll find it in the plumbing section of your hardware store. Um, basically it's to hold like a pipe in place. And so we'll end up mounting that to the bottom of this angle bracket and then screwing our tripod into that since three eighths is sort of a common tripod mounting size. Okay, we'll use a couple of these five and a half inch quarter 20 carriage bolts. They're five and a half inches long, quarter 20 width, along with these inch and a half washers. Um, put those on like that, and then just quarter 20, quarter 20 wing nuts that we'll add as well. So that way you'll be able to mount this to these uh, metal ties without using any tools. You'll also wanna get um, a set of these 16 or these 632 by 3 8 inch um, screws, and that'll be to mount our soft box, which we'll talk about in a second to our uh, cooler mount like that. And these come in a pack, you know, they're like a dollar and they, these actually came with the nuts that, uh, that it needed, so it was all in one. So you'll wanna get four, four of the bolts and then four of the nuts. So that's it for our hardware. The last thing, like I mentioned, this is the softbox mount and it's part of this softbox kit I picked up off amazon.com for maybe $15 by a company called Newer. And you can see this is kind of where the rest of the softbox comes in. It has these um, metal stakes like that that you end up putting on all four corners like so, and then you wrap you wrap the softbox around it. <clears throat> and then just maybe to kind of finish off our build and make it look nice, I have this. Uh, this is one eighth inch. Um, braided in order to cover up our wires like this, just to kind of 
finish off the build and make it look nice along with some I'm not sure which size this is maybe quarter inch heat shrink tubing so these things together will just kind of clean everything up and make it look nice but these are certainly optional if you're doing this build yourself okay the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this thermal adhesive in order to mount the led chip to the front of our cpu cooler um, we're not going to be using this plastic uh, front piece we'll leave this plastic on the back but we're going to end up having to take this off due to space concerns so you might as well take it off now to kind of get it out of the way and in order to do that you have to remove the fan by just like so so we'll get the fan out of the way for now and then this guy should just pop right out and we'll go ahead and expose our mounting surface take that sticker off one thing when you're mixing up uh, this thermal compound if you want you can use the package itself as sort of like a mixing surface which is kind of nice if you take the back of this package it ends up leaving kind of a little card like that where we can use in order to mix these two ingredients together so we'll start like that and they give us this little mixing paddle like that Okay, and basically you mix these two things together in equal parts. So we want to get good coverage to kind of cover the whole thing. Of course, when we press it down, you know, we don't want too much to ooze out. The other thing we want to think about is because this is going to be mounting with that harness that I showed you in the parts intro, we kind of want to think about where that wire is going to run. And I think maybe here and then out. To the other side over here because this is where the power will go into the aluminum box that i showed you so let's go ahead and mix these two together okay we'll wipe off this paddle so we can reuse it later and put the caps back here and we'll set this thing aside to dry okay so while our thermal adhesive cures let's go ahead and start setting up our aluminum box in order to house our boost and our buck converter now basically you can see there's this big heat sink that's attached to our boost converter here and what you want to do is go ahead and separate that out because we're going to be using this entire aluminum box as the heat sink because you can see this isn't going to fit with the lid on with the heat sink attached. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and unscrew the heat sink. Now I happen to have a second boost converter that I've already removed the heat sink from. And one thing to take note of, there's these two pads on the bottom and this is what actually transfers the heat to the heat sink. You wanna make sure that these are electrically insulated and later on we'll check with our continuity, um, a continuity test with our multimeter to make sure that these are in fact insulated from the rest of the box. I just wanna jump in here for a minute to highlight how important this step is. These pads can easily fall off the boost converter when you're removing the heatsink, and if they do, your boost converter won't be electrically insulated from the aluminum housing. Needless to say, this would be dangerous. Now, I'll show you in a minute how to use the multimeter to ensure the boost converter is properly insulated. And then, this will kind of fit down in like that, and the step down, the buck converter, will end up going on the roof like that. Now, to get your drill holes right, I went ahead and made a template that you can find and download down in the description below. It's just a PDF. Go ahead and print it out. And then when you cut it out, put it on your aluminum box like this. You probably want to end up taping it down. Just tape, taping it down like so. And that gives you all your different drill spots. Um, it has this mounting spot in the back, which is quarter inch, all these 764 which is where these PCB mounts will go, a quarter inch, that's where the electric will come out the side, and then on the bottom, this is where the main power will come in from the laptop charger. 
So go ahead and, and drill all those out. And I have one of these aluminum boxes that I've already drilled out. Go ahead and bring that in so I can show you. So here is what it looks like with all the drill holes. This is the power that comes in on the bottom. Here's the PCB mount for this step down converter. Here are the PCBs for the boost converter. Okay, one other thing that you wanna make sure you do before you put your boost converter onto uh, these PCB standoffs here, you wanna make sure that you put your mounting screw down inside this hole. And we're gonna be using one of the uh, three quarters of an inch quarter 20 screws. You wanna make sure you put that in beforehand because once the boost converter goes in, you won't have access anymore to tighten this thing down. If you notice, I have countersunk uh, this, it was a quarter inch size hole and I've countersunk it a little bit. So that way this will sit a little bit more flush. And this is what a countersink looks like. Um, so if you wanna pick one of these up as well, that'll help you kind of be able to lay this flush down like that. So with that in there, we wanna go ahead and tighten it down now because we're not gonna have access to that anymore in the future. So if we try to tighten it later, it'll just spin. So we can use this uh, screwdriver that came with our um, CPU cooler. And we need one of these wrenches and we'll go ahead and tighten this guy down. Okay, that's on there nice and tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and mount this boost converter into our box. Uh, so we'll make sure we line up the power in right there. It also might behoove us to go ahead and put these leads in um, ahead of time. So we'll do these guys just because it'll be a little bit tight once they're in there. We'll do, okay, we'll do white as positive and screw that down. Remember, these are gonna be going to our uh, buck converter in which will eventually go to the fan. Okay, again, make sure that these rubber pads are intact because they, they can't actually fall off. When I made the prototype, uh, they ended up falling off. Put those in like that. Get a couple of these red washers, a couple of these M3 screws. Make sure that they're binding on the bottom. You can see how if they fit perfectly in with that 764th screw. These guys just go right in, screws right into the metal. Okay, so we have this screwed in um, and now we've routed the wire, the wire that we wanna take to our buck converter. We've wired it around the corner like this and there's just enough room it looks like because we want this potentiometer to be mounted where it's easily accessible this way. So this is actually the in and that's the out. So these wires underneath will cross back and forth a little bit. So, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and strip these guys off. Put the white into the positive. Okay, since things are gonna get kind of tight uh, once we put this down in here, let's go ahead and put in our LED harness that's gonna go to the LED. And as you can see, I've already put on this uh, braided cabling since it'll be harder to get on later. So we'll run that. That'll go through this hole here. Tighten that down. And negative out. Now remember, we're gonna adjust these potentiometers in order to step up this to 36 volts uh, coming out. And then we'll use the other potentiometer to limit the current um, to make sure we don't overrun our power supply. So we have our out hooked up. And then the last thing, we want to have the fan connector coming out of here before we go ahead and put that guy in place. So on this side is what will connect to the out there. We'll go ahead and just cut this off. And then we really only need the red and the black. So let's separate this blue and green wire. And then we'll cut that off as well up here. I don't really need a ton of slack. I kind of want to keep this relatively tight here. So maybe we cut it there. OK, 
Okay. That seems to be secure. Okay. Now, the last thing to do, just go ahead and screw in this step down converter. You really only need to put two of these screws in. Um, it's kind of hard to reach the screws down there and it'll be stable with these because it'll be resting on the other PCB standoffs. So I'm just gonna put in these top two screws, but don't forget to put in your um, insulating washer here because there are components that are pretty close to these screw holes. We don't want anything to end up shorting out. Okay, so there we go. So we have our in going into the step down converter and then it's coming out into the fan controller. We have the out of our step up converter coming out like this and that's gonna hook up to the LED. And then last but not least, we have our power port exposed right here, which is where our laptop charger will plug in like that. And that's how we put all the electronics together. Okay, now before we hook up our boost converter to our LED or our buck converter to our fan, let's go ahead and check to make sure that we have properly electrically insulated these components from this outer aluminum casing. Now to do that, we're gonna use this multimeter. I picked this one up off Amazon for about $5. So if you don't have a multimeter, they're cheap. Uh, you should definitely add one to your toolbox. And we'll go ahead and set it to this continuity setting right here. And as you can see, this particular model shows a one when there's no current flowing between the positive and the negative leads. And when you touch it together, then you see that numbers jump around showing that there is electrical continuity between the two leads. So again, if you were to touch, say, both sides of this aluminum box, you would see electrical continuity as it's flowing through the metal box. If you were to touch, say, one of these screws that's screwed into the metal box, plus the metal box, again, you see that there's electrical continuity. Now, what we don't wanna see, for example, if we touch our in positive and we touch the box, sure enough, there's no electrical continuity, and our in negative, and our out positive and our out negative. No continuity whatsoever. Yet, to know that there's actually current flowing through the burst boost converter itself, if you were to touch the in positive to the out positive, then you see that there's some electrical continuity and the in negative to the out negative. Same thing. Okay, let's check our buck converter. So starting with the in positive, We'll check that. No electrical continuity to the box. And the in negative. And the out positive. And the out negative. Okay, looks good. And again, if we go in positive to out positive, sure enough, there's some electrical continuity. So it looks like current actually flows through our buck converter as well. And again, in negative to out negative. Okay. So that looks pretty good. It looks like we've properly insulated these electronics from the outer case. The next step is to tune these potentiometers in order to make sure that we're outputting the correct amount of voltage and current to drive our LED. Now, in order to measure current, which is what we're gonna do first, you actually need to complete the circuit to the LED. So this is when we're going to be hooking up the LED to our little harness here. Okay, so I finally got my LED chip wired up to the boost converter. Now, I was really hoping to do this as a no solder build, but unfortunately, when I was testing things out, I was clicking in this uh, wiring harness, and when I removed it, it actually broke some of the plastic pieces on this LED. So I ended up having to solder it over here on this negative and positive pad. So keep that in mind when you're doing your build at home. Uh, when you click this in, it should stay in because there's a lot of small, delicate pieces. So anyway, now that that's all set, it's time to tune these potentiometers in order to regulate how much current is being put into this LED chip. So in order to do that, we're gonna start by testing out the current and this potentiometer right here where it says the I, that will actually control the current. And then the V right here will control the voltage. Now in order to control the current or in order to test the current on our multimeter, we actually need to disconnect uh, and break the circuit so that way the current is flowing through our multimeter so we can measure it. So to do that, we'll just pull out our positive out right here and we will hook up our positive out to our negative 
out of our multimeter. And let's bring in, I've got this sort of soldering helping hands thing just in order to keep this wire from touching anything. We wouldn't want to short anything out. And then the positive side of the multimeter goes on the positive side on the out of our boost converter. Okay. And then you notice that I have these alligator clips. I have it plugged into the 10 amp max. That's because this LED chip takes up to four amps. So we'll overrun this 500 milliamp smaller one here. So we'll turn the multimeter to the 10 amp setting like so. Okay, now we'll bring in our power supply. Now, one thing you definitely wanna be careful. Obviously we're dealing with plenty of current here to kill you. So be very, very careful. We've already tested to make sure that uh, these components are electrically insulated from our box. So the box is safe to touch. One thing to keep in mind when you're plugging in this, that this transformer ends up holding a lot of residual power. So even if you unplug this or shut off the power at the wall, there's still gonna be a lot of power in this unit. And you'll know that because you'll see that this red light right here will continue to be illuminated even after you unplug your power supply. So let's go ahead and power it on. Now with these potentiometers, you wanna click counterclockwise in order to turn them down and twist clockwise in order to turn them up for both the voltage and the current. Sometimes you have to turn them quite a few times depending on how turned down they are. So um, be patient with it, but know that as you turn clockwise, it'll be turning it up. Okay, now you can see that we've adjusted the potentiometers to the point where the LED chip is sort of has this soft glow going on. But if you notice, we don't see anything on the current yet. That's because the current's so low that it hasn't registered. Now what we wanna do is, is we wanna turn up the voltage. You actually have to turn up the voltage and the current in order to get the amps up high enough to uh, reach our target of 2.7 amps. Now I'm targeting 2.7 amps, even though this thing can take a maximum of like four and a half amps, because in total, I wanna get about 100 watts to this chip. And that's because we're using 135 watt power supply. And because we're losing efficiency, using all this voltage converting, we're going from AC to DC, and then from DC 19 volts to DC 36.8 volts, which is our forward voltage on the LED chip. So in that process, we're probably losing 20% of the power that we're actually taking from the wall. So now watch what happens as I start adjusting these potentiometers. Now I'm gonna be adjusting both the voltage and the current. And at some point, I'm gonna end up being current limited as I bring up the voltage. So we'll start by bringing up the voltage. So I'm bringing up the voltage and you can see now we're actually starting to register. We're at like 70 milliamps. We're bringing that up and I'm still cranking the voltage I'm still turning the voltage potentiometer. We're just crossed 500 milliamps. And now we're at one amp, still on the voltage, 1.94 amps. Okay, you notice as I continue to turn the voltage, the amps don't go up. And that's because we're being current limited at the moment. So now I wanna switch over to the current potentiometer and start to bring that guy up a little bit. And you can see now we have more current. And again, we're targeting 2.7 amps. So that's 2.3 amps. Now we might be voltage limited again, so we'll bring the voltage up. Oh, we really wanna be current limited. So I'm gonna bring the voltage down and then bring the current up. Now let's bring the voltage up. Now oh, we've crossed, that's more than I want. Bring the current down and we'll just keep bringing the voltage up and then bringing the current down. And that way we end up current regulated. And actually I think we're there. Even if I turn the voltage up at this point, it's still staying on 2.76 amps, which is pretty close to what I wanted. Maybe just a hair less amps. So like. 2.7. Okay, so we're basically, we're currently limiting at 2.7. No matter how high I crank up this voltage size, we're not going to end up with more amps. And so that's how you fine tune the potentiometer. Now, if you want to dim your light because it's too much light for, say, a scene that you're shooting, just adjust your voltage down. 
like that, and then we'll bring the, the light down. It'll dim the light. And then when you want to brighten it up, if you want to max out your uh, laptop charger here, then just go ahead and turn the voltage all the way until the light stops getting any brighter, because at that point you've been current limited to your 2.7 amps. Let's go ahead and hook our uh, positive wire back up to our boost converter and then start focusing on tuning our fan speed using our buck converter. Okay, so we've got our fan connected here to our buck converter. And what we wanna do is we want to turn down the potentiometer all the way down. So turn it uh, counterclockwise until you hear it click. And there you can hear it about every turn it gives a little snap. And that's how you know that the potentiometer is all the way to its lowest voltage. And when we plug this thing in, the fan's not gonna be spinning at all because we've totally minimized the amount of voltage coming out. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. And you can see I've dimmed our LED so it doesn't blind the camera. Now, by default, when you plug in this uh, buck converter, it shows what the input voltage is. I don't know if you guys can read that LED on the camera, but it says 19.6 volts, and that's because that's just the voltage coming in off of our notebook uh, power supply. So there's a little button over here on the left, and if you push that, it switches over to the output voltage. So right now it's outputting 1.2 volts. So let's start turning the potentiometer, and there's only one potentiometer on this buck converter, and that controls the voltage. There's 1.7 volts, 2.7, 2.9, 3.3, 3 3.9, 4.2, there's a little wiggle, and 4.5, but it's spinning slow enough that I can't hear it and I'm standing right next to it. And that's what you want. You really want uh, just a low spinning fan because if you don't have any fan spin at all, this will actually overheat, even with this giant heat sink. All right, last time I'll jump in here. Don't underpower your fan too much. I had the fan on one of my builds set to the absolute minimum speed. And when I tilted the light for an overhead shot, the change in angle caused the fan to stop spinning. Now I didn't notice until smoke started coming off the LED and now it flickers every time it powers on. So don't make that mistake. Turn the fan down so it won't be picked up by your audio, but don't turn it so low that a change in angle would cause the fan to stop spinning. Okay, so now we've got the light hooked up, we've got the fan hooked up, so let's go ahead and mount everything on our hardware. Okay, so the first thing let's do is let's reattach this fan, and you wanna make sure that the fan is flush with uh, the back here, because this is where we're gonna be mounting some hardware. So all you gotta do is pull these tabs down, and the fan locks into place, easy enough. Okay, so let's set that aside for a minute. Okay, now the first thing you wanna do when you build your frame in order to mount your light is you wanna start with a six inch stainless steel tie. I picked this up at the local hardware store and you wanna drill three quarter inch holes in the back and they need to be pretty much exactly in the middle and properly spaced. So I made another template that you can find the link for down in the description, print that out and then tape it down over this six inch tie and drill those holes. Now, I actually already have a tie that I've pre-drilled the holes in, so what you end up with is something that looks like this. Next, you wanna take your two uh, five and a half inch long, quarter 20 diameter uh, carriage bolts. You also wanna take your two inch and a quarter washers and two wing nuts. And you wanna go ahead and fit these through the tie like that. Then you wanna take your two nylon washers, these are your uh, quarter, uh, they're half an inch on the outside, quarter inch on the inside, um, and then they're quarter inch thick nylon spacers. So go ahead and put that over like that. Slide this guy through. And then because we need to measure our cross uh, corner bracket piece, so we actually wanna go ahead and tie this down for a second, just to hold it in place and don't, over tighten these washers. Anytime you're putting these on here, just very lightly tighten them because it'll actually bend this metal frame. Okay, so now you can see we have this piece mounted like so. So we'll bring in our six inch uh, angle bracket and it is six inches on this side, six inches on this side. And what we wanna do it, because we need to drill a hole in order to go through uh, our aluminum box right here. And then also we wanna go through this center hole. So at this point, just put that in like that. And you can see on the bottom, 
that this six inch tie rests nicely in this groove on the bottom of this cooler. So then just pick it up like that and then mark where the hole is. You can see right here is where this center hole goes. So make a mark there and then also mark this top line because we're gonna cut off this excess and that'll just make it look a little bit cleaner. Now again, I've already done that. So let me bring in my pre-prepared tie. And you can see I've, I've cut it off on the top and I've drilled that other hole so it'll line up in here just right like so. You can see the line lines right up. The other thing that I went ahead and did, if we compare the original tie, is I drilled an extra hole right here and that's because we have our pipe flange, which is this, that's going to sit underneath our tie. And you pick this up again in the uh, local uh, hardware store in the plumbing section. And this has a 3 8 inch thread right here, which is a common size for tripods. So that's why this is going to be what we use in order to mount it to our tripod. But as you can see with our original pre-modified tie, there's only one hole. So just go ahead and mark. You, you have this hole already drilled, so go ahead and mark right here where you should drill your other hole. So now when you have your two holes drilled in the bottom, the next step, you can see I've again, I've countersunk these holes slightly. You want to take these two uh, three quarter inch, quarter 20 um, Phillips head machine screws, and you can see these drop in nice and flush like that because we have countersunk the two holes we drilled, or the one hole we drilled, and then we countersunk the other existing hole. Let's go ahead and pop those through. Put on our flange. and then screw on these just standard quarter 20 nuts. Now we'll go ahead and tighten these down. You wanna get them nice and tight. We'll use the screwdriver that came with our cooler, which is a nice big Phillips head screwdriver. Put that on the top and we'll tighten these down with our wrench. Okay, so we have the three pieces of our hardware pretty much ready to go, but before we connect them together, we need to install the, um, the mount that's gonna hold the soft box onto the front here. So go ahead and back, now that we've measured and cut this guy, we can go ahead and back off this six inch tie, pull these guys out, okay, pull that out for now. Okay. And if you recall, this was an accessory that came with the CPU cooler. It's meant in order to go attached to the motherboard in order to tighten up the CPU cooler to it. Now, what we've gone ahead and done on this softbox mount, I've drilled four holes, which line up with these guys right here. And again, because they need to be really, really precise, I made it, I went ahead and made a template that you can download in the description below. It fits in just like that. And then just go ahead and drill seven sixty-fourths inch holes right where the template says to. And then this thing lines up perfect. I've screwed uh, four of uh, their number 632 screws into those uh, 764 holes that we drilled. And these are three eighths of an inch long. You can see I've screwed them in from the back and they've lined up like so. So let's go ahead and take this mounting bracket that came with our CPU cooler and press it on like that. So now there's a little bit of area exposed. We'll go ahead and put these uh, 632 nuts on. And now we'll take this super long Phillips head screwdriver that came with our CPU cooler and as you can see, if you put it through, you can turn these little mounting screws in the front here like that. So we'll go ahead and attach our softbox mount like so. We'll tighten the screws. Okay, our softbox mount is attached. You can see it's ready to go and we'll put the uh, the sticks in here and then wrap the softbox around it. So now let's finish up our hardware. Let's go ahead and mount these three pieces together. So 
first you want to go ahead make sure you have your nylon spacers in here slide this six inch tie and the carriage bolts in like that and we'll take the hole that we drilled and we'll put the bolt from our aluminum box through that and then we'll push it through the center hole of our six inch tie like so and you can see there's a little bit of that bolt poking out so we're going to take just a standard quarter 20 nut and this half inch washer we're going to place that over the nut right here and then tighten that down with our wrench okay now push the bolts your carriage bolts the rest of the way through the cooler and then take your uh, inch and a quarter washers at this point you could even turn it up like this take your inch and a quarter washers slide them over the carriage bolts and then put on your wing nut okay so our entire hardware frame is done you can see how sort of the whole thing fits together there's the view from the bottom uh, we're going to end up attaching like a, this piece to our tripod or our light stand um, we've got the electronics in the back we've got our fan mounted again you can see just how tight the tolerances are here um, with this five and a half inch carriage bolt you really wouldn't want to get a six inch carriage bolt or even a five inch carriage bolt because it would either be too long and hit this screw or it'd be too short and you wouldn't be able to get this wing nut on also you can see how close uh, this um, inch and a half inch or inch and a quarter washer ends up coming. So that's really the maximum size washer you want to get to sort of distribute that weight over as much surface area as you can. Because I don't know if you can see, but already this fin is bowing a little bit. So that's why you really just want to finger tighten these and don't over tighten them. But it, mostly this piece is going to be supported from the bottom anyway when you mount the tripod. So all these things need to do is just be tight enough to keep it from falling off the front. So now let's go ahead and put the cover on the back of the electronics. Just pop that guy on like that. Open up the screws that came with it. Okay, so now our aluminum box is all closed up. Now the last step um, is to get this thing on some kind of tripod or light stand. So I got this, this is like a umbrella holder. It's made by Manfrotto. And this actually comes with uh, this pin at the top that has a 3 8 um, inch on one side and a quarter inch on the other side. So in this case, because we have our 3 8 screw right here, we can just screw it right in like that and then pop that guy on like so. And now we have something to put the whole thing on a light stand. This end will just drop right on basically any standard light stand, or if you want, this end comes, it'll screw onto a quarter inch tripod uh, mount or a uh, 3 8 inch. So it'll take a 3 8 it's got a 3 8 inch female and a quarter inch female. Um, or if you have some sort of like light post stud, such as this one right here, you can just uh, put that in and tighten it down here. You can tilt the light down. You can tilt the light up. You can swivel the light back and forth. And so it gives you a really flexible uh, mounting solution for shining this LED.